We've been making use of the C standard input output library by including at the beginning of our program this statement, pound include standard io.h. Now what this does is it copies into our C file function prototypes for scanf and printf and related functions so that our program will compile successfully to an object code. And then from there in the last stage, the linker is going to link in with our object code, the object code for printf and scanf, so that we can create a successful executable. Now, often you want to create your own libraries for functions that you'll be using over and over again. And to do that, you create a header file, .h file, like at standard io.h, as well as a C code that contains the functions or the library could be already a pre-compiled object code. So let's say, for example, that you're often going to want to be able to calculate the volume of a sphere given the radius of that sphere. So you decide to create a library called rad2volume. So let's take a look at what a header file might look like. So here's a header file that does two things, basically. It defines pi, or we call it my pi. So this is a constant that we define 3.14. And now we've made that available to any program, any C file that includes rad2volume.h, just like we include standard input output.h. And we've also provided a function prototype here called radius2volume. It takes in a double, which is the radius of the sphere, and it's going to return another double, and that's going to be the volume of the sphere. The only other thing that's going on here in this header file is this, what's called an include guard. So this is a preprocessor command here that says, if there's never been defined a constant called rad2volume h, then go ahead and define it. And this is the ending of that if statement. On the other hand, if it's already been defined, we're going to skip everything between the if not defined to the end if. So why is that? It's because when we compile this code, we want to make sure that we don't accidentally include rad2volume.h twice during the same compilation to object code. Otherwise, we're going to have two definitions, for example, of the function prototype, and that would cause, cause a compiler error. So this is our header file. It gives to us a constant and a function prototype for the function radius to volume. Now let's take a look at the C code that would go along with that in the library. And our C code here is going to include a math header file. So this gives us access to the function pow or power. And it's also going to include, include this uh, header file itself so that it's got its own function prototype and it has access to my pi. Now within this code, there's two functions. One is called cuber, and one is called radius to volume. Now, radius to volume is the public function that we want to make available to other codes that are going to use this library. And that's why radius to volume has a uh, function prototype up here in the header file. On the other hand, there's this other function called cuber. Its only job is to cube a double that's passed to it. And that is just meant for internal use. And because of that, we only define it within this C file itself. We don't make it available to external codes. And we see that because there's no function prototype up here in the public header file. OK, so now this is our C library, a header file and the C code that goes with it. So I'm going to define a function that uses them just to demonstrate it. So here's main.c. And main.c is going to include our standard input output library, but it's also going to include the rad2 volume header. Okay. And then within the function, all it does is it uses radius to volume to calculate the volume. And then it prints out both my pi here as well as the volume at the end. So to compile this, we could say gcc main.c as well as rad2 volume.c. And I'll call the output main. Compiles, we run it. And it just prints out the value of pi that we got from the header file, as well as the volume that it calculated using the uh, helper library's function rad to volume, radius to volume, sorry. OK, so this is a simple example of creating your own library. Now let's look at a more generalized example of this. 
So here's a project that's going to have two helper libraries. We call them helper 1.c and helper 2.c. Each of them has their own helper, helper header files. And we also have the main function over here. Now, the way you see the uh, dependencies here is showing which files are including which other files. So helper 1.c is including its helper 1.h file, which actually includes another file because an include file, a header file, can include another header file. So helper 1.h includes this general.h. Similarly, helper 2.c includes helper 2.h, which also includes general.h. And then main.c over here uses both helper 1 and helper 2 header files for those two libraries, but it's also making use of this general.h header file. Okay, so this is an overview of a project, three C files, three header files, and their dependencies. And now let's see what happens when we build this project. So each of the C files is going to compile independently into its own object code. So for example, here's main.c. As, as you can see, it includes helper 1.h, helper 2.h, as well as general.h. This all gets compiled and turned into main.o. Here, helper 2.c includes its two include files, compiles to helper 2.o, and helper 1.c here compiles to helper 1.0. So we've got our two library object codes now and our main object code, and in the end, these are linked to make the final program myprog. So to summarize, here are things that you would not include in a library header file. You would not include private function prototypes, constant, or macros. So for instance, if only one C file needs to use that function, if only one C file needs to use that constant or macro, then you would just define that in the C file itself. You wouldn't put it in the header file because you don't want to make them available to external programs. In our earlier example, that would be the cuber function, for example. Another thing you don't want to decide in a, or define in a library header file is a line of the form int global. Now, if your program sees int global, it's going to define and allocate space for a variable called global. If during the compilation of a single or the building of a single project, you have two different C files compiled to object files, and each of them has included this header file, they've both defined their own global variable called global, and now when you link them together at that stage, there's going to be an error because we're going to see there's two global variables that have been defined. So you don't want to put that in a header file. You want to put these global variables in the C file itself. Here are things that you do want to put in a library header file. You always want to have an include guard. This makes sure that you don't accidentally include the same header twice during the compilation to the same object code. You might want to have other include files, other pound includes for perhaps data types or other things that your header file needs. You might want to include other header files. You might want to define a new data type in a header file. You want to give public function prototypes so other C files can make use of the functions in your library. Also constants and macros that you want to make publicly available. And finally, uh, you could have a command. You don't want to have int global, which actually allocates the space in the header file. But in the header file, you could have a command of the form extern int global. And what this extern means is that you're not allocating space here. You're just saying, hey, there is a variable of the name global that I want you to have access to. So you're declaring it, but you're not defining or allocating the space for it. Now, if your C helper file uses the function global and allocates that space, or sorry, uses the variable global and allocates that space with int global, by putting this in the header file, you make that variable available to outside functions, outside C files.